Welcome everyone uh, to Advocate Center. Uh, great to see everyone. It's been a uh, long five and a half months uh, since the season ended. Uh, we went to off-season uh, thinking about that Miami game and what we could have done better. Uh, that trickled down to, you know, to find the reasons why we were 40 and 42. We've done uh, some things that we liked and some things that we didn't like. Um, things that we liked, we were pretty good against the top teams and we were, you know, top five in uh, defense. The things that we didn't like, how many games we lost, close, close games, and uh, we finished 24th in offense. Um, in off season, uh, Kobe, Io, um, and we were looking for you know physicality and toughness and you know shooting, energy, motor, and we landed on Javon and uh, Tori. And uh, so this year, we're looking to play faster. We're going to try to move ball better, uh, change shooting profile. And then last but not least, we're looking to improve our team cohesion. And I was going to Nashville. Um, and doing the training camp there is going to be an opportunity for our guys to, uh, to be together, eat, train. Uh, we're going to do some events there together. And it's a great opportunity for this group. So I'm looking forward to it. And we open up for questions. Arturis, I, I know you already discussed the additions you guys did. But considering what went down the last week with Boston and what Milwaukee did, how tough of a, is a sell, in, in your opinion, to this fan base that, hey, we are sticking with continuity and, and adding these couple pieces, but these same teams in the East are doing this and this. I mean, is that kind of a tough sell for this fan base that we're going to stick this way, but these teams that finished above us are still being aggressive? I mean, I don't, I don't think it's tough to sell. I think I'm optimist about this group. I believe in this group. I believe in Billy. Uh, improving certain things. We were, you know, we had goals last year. Um, focused on you know improving our record against good teams and improving our defense, we accomplished that. We took a step back in on offense, and it was actually you know the details that we we scored more points than the year prior, but we still were 24th because everybody else made adjustments. So it's about you know adjusting from the past year and uh, get some improvement. Tori, if you could comment on those additions, and then also Arturis and Mark last week on the radio talked about the point guard position being an open competition. How do you view that as well as the power forward position? Yeah, I mean, I, I got a chance right when we acquired Javon and, and, and Tori to meet with them here, and I spent some time with them here, both guys, and in the last several weeks they've been in here. Um, I've, from afar, have admired both those guys competitively in the way they play. I think as it relates to Tori, Arturis has had, a, I think, a very, very close relationship with him in Denver and knows him very, very well and I think knows exactly what he can bring to the table in our conversations. And I think Javon is somebody, again, you know, being down the road in Milwaukee and what he's done defensively and how much he's improved his shooting, I think both those guys will add some toughness and physicality and experience to our team. You know, as it relates to the point guard situation, you know, I think that we've had to do it you know, with Lonzo's situation by committee. And, you know, Javon has played back there. He's played off the ball. Kobe has played back there. He's played off the ball. So is Io. Alex has played there. So I think the biggest thing for us is, you know, a lot of times the guy at the point transferring the ball across half court, getting us into offense is critical. Um, in the loss of Lonzo, when that did happen, you know, we had a guy that was just, that's what he did really, really well. But I think Kobe's more experienced now to handle some of that responsibility. So is Io, you know, going into his third year now and what he's gone through his first two years. And like I said, I don't know Javon well enough from that position, but clearly when you watch him play on film, he's, he's been back there and has played that position. So we'll have to look at different options there. Billy, um, 
You guys have scored at best around 112 points per possession with Zach, DeMar, and Vooch on the floor together the last two seasons. How do you get more out of that offense around those three? Well, I think that, you know, that was one of the things I really tried to do, you know, in the offseason was to, to take a deep dive. I think to what Arturis mentioned, you know, we didn't average a lot more points, but I think the league average went up quite drastically. So I think maybe the year before we were 12th offensively, somewhere around there. And now this year we fall to 24th. So why is that? You know, you look at Zach, DeMar, and Vooch. Those three guys in particular had career uh, effective field goal percentage. Both those guys, all three of those guys were in the top one, two of their best seasons. So how do you have three guys at that level offensively and then look at the fact that we're 24th on offense? We shot the ball 11th best of anybody in the league. Our effective field goal percentage was good. The issue for us is we did not get to the free throw line. We were like 24th or 25th there. And the other part of it is we did not have any opportunity to offensive rebound. And I think like Arturs had just talked about the shot profile, to me it's less about taking more threes as much as about how you generate them. And our biggest challenge with this group has got to be we've got to get into the paint. It's not even about plays or different things. I know we tried to give a little because we did the year before get pretty, I thought, predictable with some of the injuries, so heavily dominant, relying on DeMar and trying to open it up a little bit more. But we've got to do a better job spacing. We've got to do a better job attacking the paint because about 85% of your fouls are taking place in the paint. It's the best opportunity to offensive rebound is on those shots. And then the third thing is those are where you could kick out threes, you know, and I think that that's got to be a real focus for us. You know, I, I think that missed shots, we improved our transition from a year ago. We got better there. I think we can still be more efficient um, as it relates to league averages, but we've got to not only play fast, but play with a purpose, so to speak, and, you know, get into, you know, situations where, you know, we have a mentality that, is going to change our shot profile. And I think what changes our shot profile is how well we can attack the paint. Uh, Billy, kind of following up on the point guard question, when you're approaching a position battle like that one going into training camp, what's kind of your ideal timeline of how you want that to go? And do you have any specific characteristics that you're looking at that you kind of let those three guys know you're wanting to see filled in that position? Well, you know, I think competition's always good. And I think that competition being healthy in terms of making each other better is important. But over an 82-game schedule, a lot can change. You know, the way you potentially start at the point guard position on opening night may be totally different by game 35 or game 20. So, you know, there's going to be some different things we'll look at, you know, as it relates to that. You know, sometimes you change the rotation. It could be somebody starting may give a boost to somebody coming off the bench. You know, I really admired Kobe last year just from the standpoint that he started my first year. You know, then he started to come off the bench a little bit more last year, and he really took full advantage of that. So you also want to try to put guys in the best position. So when I would actually make that decision, I don't know. I think you got to let those guys play a little bit. And we could potentially start one of those guys and then decide that it's got nothing to do with them per se, but it may be better in our rotation to have a, you know, a player that's starting maybe in the second unit or putting a different person in that position. So I, I would say that it probably would be an evaluation of our team, but clearly opening night you're going to have somebody start there. It's just, you know, I can't answer whether or not that would continue for all 82 games. Question for uh, Arturas. Uh, actually, about your previous team, you were with the Nuggets for a long time and they won the championship this year. What do you think about that, especially about Nikola Jokic's success? Well, I'm obviously happy and for, you know, Nuggets organization uh, for winning the championship. And this is something as an example for us to follow and, and something that we want to bring to this city and for this organization. But we had a lot of uh, work in front of us, so... This is also for our tourists. Obviously, you've seen the uh, arms battle in the Eastern Conference with Milwaukee acquiring Damian Lillard and then Drew Holiday going to Boston yesterday. A lot of Bulls fans are wondering how involved were the Bulls in those conversations and how do you think those acquisitions will impact your ability to be a factor in the Eastern Conference? Again, you know, I, I don't comment on rumors or how much we were involved, but, you know, we're always going to look for ways to improve and get aggressive. Uh, at this at this time, I think w the group that we have, 
you know, we, we go in pretty confident into training camp, and I'm looking forward to see them on the floor and what they've done this summer. I mean, I saw those guys work extremely hard all summer, so, um, you know, about, you know, Zach, DeMar, Vooch, those guys, we know exactly what they're bringing, and, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to see our young guys improve and take a step forward. Hey, uh, Billy, when you uh, talk about playing faster with more motion, that kind of thing, what are the obstacles of getting uh, largely the same group to sort of adapt and adjust their play style so you can play that way? Yeah, like I, I, I think it's like this idea of playing faster, like I think Arturis had mentioned, like certainly to the credit of our guys, they did a, a really good job last year defensively considering I felt like the year prior to that we fell off the cliff once we lost Alex and DeMar to, I mean, Alex and Lonzo to injury. And to those guys' credit, I thought we really had a good foundation and they did a really, really good job as a group of making a jump where we were like maybe finished the year at 22nd or 23rd all the way up to 5th. When you get to that point, you're going to be in transition, you know, quite a bit on missed shots. I think we can get more productive and effective even though we were better last year so I think the other thing too you look at like made basket offense I think it's really hard to come down 100 miles an hour and just think you're just gonna people think fast just racing up and down the floor I think we got to be efficient you know in, in kind of what we're doing so I think to to your question about okay you got all these same guys what do we have to do a little bit differently I think some of the things we've got to do differently is we've got to be more I think there's got to be more consistent consistency with our, our spacing, you know, and helping each other, you know, and not getting in each other's way and giving each other room to breathe, so to speak. But it also comes down to guys being in position to make the next play. I think there was a lot of opportunities where somebody may have been putting the ball on the floor or looking to attack, but you've got somebody five steps behind the three-point line, not really ready to make the, the next play. And can we find ways to keep the ball ahead of the defense? I'm not looking for, like, these – I think Vooch is who he is as a player. So is DeMar. So is Zach. These guys have all been in the league 10-plus years. So how do we utilize their skill set but also understand that the game's got to be easier for them as it relates to playing against closeouts. And they've got to give guys like Kobe and Io and Javon and Tori and Alex and Kobe, guys like that, opportunity – to create so that they can play against some closeouts too. Uh, but that's not going to happen if our spacing is not great. And I think that's got to be a real, real, you know, focus for us uh, in training camp. And then the next thing is when there is shifts and helps, you know, DeMar, Zach, Vooch, they see crowds a lot. Like when they get off the ball, we've got to be able to make that kind of that next play to kind of get the defense, you know, into some rotation. Your, 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 your offense is generally predicated on how often and how much you can get two people on the ball in the half court. And then you've got to try to attack from there. And, you know, I think some of the things that, that we struggled with from an offensive standpoint, it wasn't so much that we didn't shoot the ball well or, uh, you know, we didn't make any improvements on the fast break. We did not get to the free throw line at a high enough rate, and we did not get to the offensive glass enough. Some of that is where we're shooting the ball from. And to be honest with you, we were one of the worst teams in the league last year getting into the teeth of the defense, and we've got to create enough space that we can do that. So it's not so much I want those guys to change the way they play, but can they be more in a, posi a mindset and understanding of where the game is going trend-wise? You know, you've got to be able to make some plays at the basket to open up opportunities to offensive rebound and, and shoot free throws. Arturis, how will you define success for this group this season? And is there a benchmark you'd like to see them reach before the trade deadline? Well, I think, uh, you know, for this group, we wanted to get into playoffs. And example last year that once you get into playoffs, you know, there's, there's an opportunity for a lot of teams. And it goes into matchups. It goes, you know, if you are healthy, so there's a lot of factors once you get in the playoffs. So I think there's an opportunity there to make noise. So that would be my my view for this, uh, you know, for this team. And I mean, anyway, right now the comments about us that a lot of people not expecting us to 
you know, to be anywhere. Like, actually, I compare it to two years ago. The expectations are pretty much the same because, uh, but I have faith in this group and Billy that we, that we are going to be a good team and uh, going into this training camp, I'm just looking forward to see that on the floor. Arturis, uh, DeMar has never hid how happy he's been here in Chicago since, mm -hmm. since you acquired him. Um, and he's obviously played at an extremely high level in his, in his two seasons here. I know you won't comment specifically about contract extension talks, but generally kind of how will you approach his, his future? Well, the, the one that I'm going to say that we love DeMar, uh, that the last two years has been unbelievable for us. Uh, Two-time All-Star, second-team All-NBA. Um, he loves Chicago. Chicago loves him back. Um, yeah, I'm very excited for this season to play with DeMar. Do you, plan on, do you, do you have a desire to extend it? I mean, the talks are ongoing, so I'm not going to comment on that. Billy, in regards to Io, what specifically would you like to have see Iowa improve on from last year going into this year when you talk about the point guard competition that he's going to be in? And Arturis, you mentioned briefly about how you want the young guys to develop. What specifically, in what ways, in what areas do you want those young guys in development? Well, I, you know, I think one of the things that was really, really beneficial, you know, it, I, I think someone's progress is not just always like a direct path upwards. And I, I owe probably in a lot of ways exceeded expectations. You know, when Lonzo went down and we were kind of at a jam there, he really stepped in and played incredible basketball the second half of his rookie year with the opportunity he was given. But with that opportunity comes more film, more preparation against opposing teams. And there was things that, you know, for him that he probably wasn't ready to see, to be quite honestly, last year. And I think he had a really good summer. He was in here the whole summer, put the work in. But I can think that offensively he can see the way he was being guarded. I think there's things he knows he's got to get better at uh, as it relates to finishing around the rim, decision-making, shooting the basketball, those kind of things. Um, and, you know, him being efficient. You know, I think the, the biggest thing with those young guys to me is them being efficient and productive, but also, you know, just being confident and aggressive when opportunities present themselves for, for themselves to be aggressive. Um, and I think for Io even though I think it was challenging for him at times last year, it may end up being the best thing for his growth to actually have to go through some adversity and some challenges the way he did because he handled it great, not only in season, but I think this off season. Well, and I think uh, to continue on that, I think right after the season finished, I think, you know, a lot of our young guys felt that they need to go back to the gym and get better. I think the complacency set in after previous season when we had a little bit of success, uh, but their approach was unbelievable this summer, and I saw them all the time in the gym. So I'd like to see them in training camp uh, and what they've done this summer. Arturis, I know at the end of the last season at the press conference, we asked you about the luxury tax and how stiff that was as far as you crossing it. And you had said that Reinsdorf's didn't really draw a line. Mm -hmm. The fact that you guys did not cross into that, does that, I mean, their history has always been if they believe in a product, they'll spend. Does that kind of say what their belief is in this group? And have you been told that as the season goes on, if this group can show something that, yes, they will be aggressive. They will look to add. I mean, that's kind of been at least Jerry's track record on the baseball side of things. When, when the team's been good, he's added. I think uh, we we at the point where we're going to go into luxury tax if we are confirming that this is the group. And I think this is just giving more time for this group to figure it out. And I think once you have a consistent consistent success – you know, you can go for it. So I think, you know, in all my conversations with uh, Jerry and Michael, uh, you know, obviously they have no problem going into it, but we have to make sure that this is the right group. And I believe in them. I, I have faith in them and, you know, going into the season and, you know, we'll see the season, how it's going to play out. 
Uh, Billy, you mentioned Lonzo and Caruso when it came to playing with pace and really, um, you know, pushing the ball, not letting the ball stick. Is that something you're emphasizing, you know, in training camp is not letting the ball stick? And how do you go about emphasizing ball movement and mixing it with, you know, the Mars isolation play? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's always a balance, right? I mean, DeMar is who he is for a reason, and, and he's a very smart player. And the one thing I respect about DeMar is everything that he always does is with the, what is best for the team in that moment. I think for us, with the, with it, with the ball part of it sticking, we got to be able to make quicker decisions, quite honestly. And some of that is being ready to play. You know, be, when you're a gifted offensive player, a lot of times, you know, when the ball comes to you, you kind of hold it and you size up the defense and in a lot of times, we've got to be better at making what I would say more decisive, quicker decisions. Because when the ball does stick or gets held, you're playing against a loaded floor and you're playing against a loaded defense. And then it goes counterintuitive to what I just discussed earlier. We can't get to the paint that way. And we get caught with a shot profile that's not going to make us successful. So I don't think it's necessarily about like what play we're running as much as, you know, can we make the next play and the next best play? You know, it can't be, well, I, I just missed two threes in a row and I'm open, but I'm not going to shoot it because I just missed two. Like, we got to play with what the defense is, is giving us and take that. And But we've got to be decisive with decision-making because, you know, for us, with the free-throw line, the offensive rebounding and some of those things, out of the four major categories offensively, two of them were okay. We did a great job taking care of the basketball. We were in the top ten. And our effective field goal percentage, the way we shot the basketball, was really good. Um, so it's not necessarily about the shots all the time, but it is about like where you're getting shots from. So if you're going to take a lot of non-paint twos or tough non-paint twos and you miss those shots, those are like the least, the, 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 the hardest and most difficult shot to offensive rebound. And you don't get fouled in that area. So if we can take shots even in the paint, it may not be at the rim, but in the paint, that's, that's better for us. I think last year we... We were the best team in the league finishing in the paint. Problem is we got there the fewest amount of times of anybody in the league. And, you know, we've got to help each other. And I think myself and our staff got to help them with the spacing to try to make sure that we can do that. And, again, when you get downhill, there's generally help. And that's when the ball can move a lot better. I, I think just coming down and just moving the ball around the perimeter with no purpose doesn't really do much either. A lot of the ball movement's predicated on how well you can force a team to rotate or put two on the ball. Arturis, um, uh, I, I don't want to mention directly the Denver Nuggets since they won, and obviously they have the MVP. But um, over the years, one of the criticisms of the Nuggets was that they were staying standing pat. They weren't all the teams around them making moves, hitting stars, this and that. Is your general philosophy more to, you know, continuity, remain with the group you have, and go forward rather than making changes? I think the big thing is to make adjustments, you know, and the league is changing every year. And, you know, besides building through the draft, you got to be looking at opportunities in free agency and got to look at opportunities in trade. So I think that's, you know, that approach never change. Um, the thing is that it's exciting. This market is exciting. It's like, you know, they they like their teams to succeed and they want to see them succeed every year and that's a challenge but you know i'm i'm looking forward to it billy uh patrick williams started 65 games last season but he experienced quite a bit of success when he made that move uh putting caruso at power forward is patrick the starter moving into training camp or will that be an open competition yeah i mean i'd like i mean again Patrick has got to play an integral role to our team, and I think integral minutes. And, and I know a lot of times people get wrapped up in starting, not starting. Um, I don't want to sit there and say, listen, here's our starting lineup right now, because I don't know that. But Patrick has played a lot of his career here as a starter. He's also come off the bench, and he's helped us. And I think we just want to put all of our guys in a position that they can be successful. you know. But clearly, to your point, he did have – success in the second unit and that's not me indicating he's coming off the bench but it may indicate that he does start and we find a way to potentially get him back in there with that second unit where he can be in situations to be a little bit more aggressive um but i think patrick's had a good summer um i think he's he's worked uh, i think he's gotten better um i give him credit with how much he's improved shooting the basketball from his his rookie year to now he just continues to get better 
But, you know, him and Io and Kobe, when you look at some of those younger players, we need them to take a jump. So um, I, would, I would expect Patrick to totally take, play an integral role to our team. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.